Hi everybody. Today I'll be making a birthday card. It's been a while since I made a video, and, but it's not been a while since I last painted. But today I felt inspired to record myself doing this and maybe go back to making videos again. Because it's fun. It's really fun to make videos. And so for this card today, um, I'm going to be making a vintage inspired balloon for a two year old boy. So here I'm starting um, with the drawing that I try to keep it very light but I'm making it a little darker here so it can be seen in the camera. Um, I wanted that number two to be centered right in the middle there so it was easier to just draw the number first and then create the circle around it. I want this balloon to be very round. And then my next step here is to erase the drawing as much as I can without removing completely and still being able to see some of my outlines. For this card I chose muted colors because I'm thinking of the vintage feel for something, uh, of something, and you know if you think about vintage things, they have that col those colors that are not very strong, right? They're not very uh, bright and vibrant. To me, I don't know. <laughs> I could be wrong. So I chose those colors, and the first thing I do here is to paint the entire thing with water because I want my paint to really spread out evenly in the first layer. I'm also starting um, by painting my lightest shade first because I want to protect the um, the highlight of the balloon. I chose to, to imagine that the light was coming from the top left and for that reason that top left of the balloon has to be the lightest. I also notice that I'm not painting the number two, I'm actually painting around it. And when I was adding the water, uh, when I was painting the balloon with water first, I totally avoided painting the number two. This way I'm going to ensure that the paint is not going to get there, right? I want to keep that number two white. And now that I'm done with the lightest shade, I move on to the darker one. Now it's time to make the shadow. And if the light is coming from the top left, that means that the darkest side of this balloon, which is a round thing, is going to be on the bottom right. And I had already prepared all my different shades, so I don't have to think about it at this time. So here I am still building up the uh, the shadows because the paint here is drying very fast because it's cold and I have a heater going right next to me. So the paint is the, the paint dries like very quickly. And I see that it's getting lighter. Much lighter than I wanted. I just keep building. And here I'm removing some of the pigment because I feel like I don't have enough of a highlight there. Now I'm adding even darker shades down there to give it more dimension.
And after looking at the uh, painting, I, I feel like it's still not dark enough. <laughs> My shadows are not dark enough. So I, um, I darkened that blue even more. And as you can see there, when I'm mixing a little bit of brown onto my dark blue, it turns into black very quickly. So I, I go back and I add more blue <laughs> to make it look a little darker, but not completely black. And I go back into the painting and I forget to add water before I go with the, with the paint. <laughs> so I have to add the water afterwards to spread the, the paint evenly. But you see, I'm using um, cotton paper and it's a lot easier to manage or the, the, the paint on the paper because of that. I don't think I would be able to get away with um, wetting the, pa the, the paint afterwards in the other type of paper. Another thing I was, it was kind of bothering me in this painting before I came back with the darker blue was that the color was just too smooth. I like having the, um, you know, the, the bumpiness and the, uh, the texture of the paint there and I was just painting the color too solid. The color was just too solid. I think that this is an improvement. Now for the name. One thing that I really like to add to my birthday cards is calligraphy. And the first step for me when doing this is to measure out and figure out more or less where I want the name to be. In this case, I want it to be right above the balloon and not go past any of the edges of the balloon. So I put on those two lines there to help me guide to help guide me then I just write the name in pencil and that gives me a good idea of the sizes of the letters that I have to keep in there now I'm moving on to ink and for this one I chose uh, the walnut ink which is a little brownish color kind of looks like sepia and I think that that goes really well with the um, vintage feel that I'm going for in this card. I kept the speed normal for this part of the video so that you can see how slow the process of uh, writing calligraphy is. And because I don't want to bore you, <laughs> I increased this. This is at two times the speed. And even then, I think it looks pretty slow, right? And after everything is dried, very completely dry, you can go back and erase everything. I thought that this card, the edges were not straight enough, so I went back in and cut the and cut it. <laughs> 
and rounded the edges. That's like my favorite tool to use. I love the rounder. And it's ready. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I hope it's not one year from today. <laughs> Bye.